Hello everybody and welcome to our first masterclass based on the King of the Hill event that's being run by myself and AE uh, in Company of Heroes 2 at the moment. Uh, today's masterclass is with Lovenest. Hello Lovenest. Hey guys. Hey Danny. Hello. Uh, and thank you very much for doing this by the way Lovenest. Um, I just want to explain very quickly the idea of this is we had some really good games on, uh, on last Sunday. And uh, I would love to highlight this game, you know, get some of the top players to go through their strategies, what happened, uh, kind of like every step of the game. Maybe explain the build order, explain the philosophy of playing from the back foot, that kind of thing. Uh, which, no offense, Love Nest, you did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a, was a rough start, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we won't spoil it too much. But, um, yeah, so the idea of this is basically just to uh, show players uh, how they can play from certain situations, what the top players are, are doing and thinking uh, at any point. But uh, we won't waste too much time. Uh, we're only seeing this from your perspective currently. So let's talk about uh, you, Love Nest. Oh, and nice. Your, Center your, of attention. <laughs> your favorite part of the interview. Let's talk about you. <laughs> um, just before we miss it, talk, talk about your opening build a little bit. Here. So, um, well, uh, he got to choose. I had to choose the map and uh, I went with uh, Crossing in the Woods. So um, I, I wasn't sure whether he was like relying on his allies. But he picked Austere, so I went with uh, the Soviets because I had um, good experience with them in the, in the past. And I was uh, actually curious to try out my uh, good old sniper build, but this time without penal support and more with uh, conscript support. I imagine perhaps it's easier with conscripts because they're so good in terms of utility sense. They, 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 you know, they can throw the 18 aids, they're good against you know, like stunting vehicles that would push the sniper perhaps. Do you feel better using conscripts with the sniper now? Um, more like safer because yes, as you mentioned, they have that AT snare, which makes them way more reliable to like uh, avoid 2-2-2 two -two -two rushes compared uh, to like penals. Mm -hmm. And um, but but they kind of lack in the DPS department. Um, well, not in really the DPS department, but they suffer on crossing in the woods because of like these long range engagements. Mm -hmm. You rarely have this opportunity to like I don't know get, have a have a good angle on your opponent on crossing. It's kind of tough. So this is an interesting one for me then because uh, in a sense what you're saying is that. Uh, conscripts maybe have a disadvantage in crossing in the woods, but you're still using them. Yeah. So what's your reason for using conscripts here? Uh, at this point, at this patch, what's the kind of background? Um, well, because if you go like the, the old build that I used during GCS, it doesn't really work anymore. There are no homing statues without the upgrade. <laughs> For penals, so um, plus I just wanted to like try it out. I used to do these kind of builds in the past, but um, yeah, I just wanna just wanted to give it a try. Okay, I mean, so, I mean conscripts obviously have had uh, a bit of a boost in this patch, uh, which is really good. Oh, one thing I want to ask you because uh, this actually happened when I was casting the game live. How did you lose that first? engineer squad <laughs> yeah actually like i don't know if you if you monitored the engagement but the we were actually in cover at the same time the grand squad and uh, the uh, the engineer squad and the engineers like i thought i could like get one model uh, one uh, snipe on the models and then i retreat but actually like these grandees did so much damage and they dropped like if you take a look at them they haven't dropped like a single model or any serious chunk of health so yeah. I was kind of surprised, and they were like casually sniping the last model while like they were moving. There was some. Um, uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. That is unfortunate because actually the the model, the one model that was retreating, was had a pretty decent amount of health. Yeah. So uh, that was probably just pure RNG. I mean, I remember casting it and thinking like, how did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, that was. It, I mean, uh, nobody really would expect such a such a snipe. No. Um, but yeah, there was a late retreat, anyways. Um, I kind of miscalculated the, the situation mm. so one thing i want to ask you um we've just come out of the patch where penal battalions were uh very very prominent in kind of meta um yeah. and one of the the kind of drawbacks you know you know if you tech tier two to maxims or if you go tier one penal battalions uh soviets are very much slower to the field 
Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's the longer build times and things like that. So at the moment here, you, you've got three conscripts, you've got your sniper, you are still lacking in any kind of territory right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and why do you think that is? Well, probably the, the engineer loss uh, didn't help. <laughs> um, well, I could have could have just sticked like to heavy cover somewhere at the fuel point, at the soft fuel point, and could have preserved a little bit of uh, map control, but I lost it. And um, then the sniper opening, of course. Like sniper opening always means that you lack some uh, some map control, obviously. Mm. But um, it usually gets better the longer you play. Yeah. Um, I, so that was kind of. Yeah, we we talk about this in casting, which is kind of the sniper is an early game investment that as long as you keep it alive and you play it, you tend to just slowly eat away at your your opponent's manpower at a rate that it, it just at some point it tips in your advantage and, and right. is working really well for you so um but why the it, sniper first before the conscripts is it um uh, maybe it just just, just habit <laughs> right like i used to do this bit like i having such a great time playing with the sniper and um, even though you are in the dis disadvantage in the early game, like um, I'm, a I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, it's just habit. Maybe it's because usually you don't really get to that point where you like build a late game sniper of Soviets. Because in the later stage of the game, you can just like build vehicles and like use them kind of as a sniper, like a T70. So like the early game kind of seems like the, the perfect spot for me with the sniper. Just because you can pick off these these grens. Yeah, nothing to hold you back then. That's yeah, right. So okay, what one thing whilst we're uh, we're just hitting this stage again. So you you've locked in your commander choice already. We see guards have just come on the field around you know six minutes forty five. So <laughs> this is, this is to me is early. Like we haven't seen a threat from tier two Austria yet, but you've gone for the guards. So. Give me a little explanation of your commander choice, why you like this at the moment. Well, this has been one of the commanders which uh, have been uh, revamped, revamped. So they're uh, they're definitely better now. The I don't know, the, the guards definitely feel better. The PTRS is more powerful, maybe a bit too powerful. The PPSHs, I don't know why, but they seem to be more... They seem to be better. I don't know, maybe because of the, the changes to to the um, conscript damage output. Yeah. And um, the IL-2 is crazy. Seriously, like against Ostair, you can just pick this commander because of the IL-2. Because Ostair kind of lacks in uh, the anti-air department. I mean, they have that 2-2-2, two -two -two, but that thing usually goes down at a certain timestamp. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the IL-2 is perfect. It's interesting because I, I've never, like, I. The way I see the IL-2 is kind of like a suppression platform, I never really see it. I, I see it wipe some models, but never like squads or things like that. Really. So it's, it's more like the... Like, the cycle you start by... Uh, like, if you do that, you're you're forcing your opponent back to their base most of the time. Or like, to fall back really hard. So, you get more territory, and the more territory you get, the more resources you, uh, you receive. And the more you can like, spam out these, the more you can like, use these abilities. It's kind of kind of ironic, actually. You can just use it, and you gain ground, and then you can use it again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, it's not as powerful against OKW. So I want to just um, I I kind of agree with that because obviously you've got base defenses, potential tier four. You know, like half track is easy to build from battle group. But fine, uh, I kind of yeah. get. The, the advantage over us did, but um, let's have a, a, a quick talk because at this stage of the game, right now, 10 minutes in, you've lost your engineer. I think you lost a conscript squad as well. Oh, um, not that I know of. <laughs> uh, well, you had three, and I'm pretty sure you had two. I'll, I'll check. All right, you got me. You <laughs> I'm got good. Me. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see it now, actually. <laughs> you tried to yeah, get away I lost with it. That. <laughs> yeah, actually, like, the first one was unfortunate, but the second one was just uh, just a little bit. Like rusty, I, yeah. I didn't retreat it soon enough. There was like a rifle grenade, rifle grenade incoming, and I saw that miles away. But... This was in the center VP, actually. I remember. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So let's just uh, because 
This is obviously a big thing for a lot of people. When you lose two units within 10 minutes of gameplay, this is like a big negative in terms of kind of gameplay psychology. You feel like you're on the back foot. Can I win? My opponent has a big advantage. Like, how, how are you dealing with this right now? And do you have a plan in place at the moment to recover from this? Or are you... Uh, are you stressed? Are you, how, how are you dealing with this? Um, yeah, definitely stressed. Um, I hate losing squads and the, the, the first urge I have after losing a squad is to rebuild it. Like, I kind of want to have my core army above anything else. Like, even if he got a Panzer IV out, I probably would rebuild that construct. <laughs> it was kind of, like, stuck in my head. <laughs> But um, yeah, just rebuild my forces. Uh, like around this time, after losing two squads already, I focus like on one side now to get uh, like a little bit of ground. So slowly build up. Don't lose too many VPs, which I well kinda managed to do. Yeah. And um, then go from there. I mean, well, you, like you my got, next you lost idea was pretty quickly, but you're kind of getting the focus on the VPs right yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so interestingly as well, because on the map, even though, and, and I really liked this actually, is that when Nagano captured the fuel, you didn't go for the fuel, you went for the decap of the strategic point in front of that, which oh, yeah. um, I remember actually bringing out in the car, so this is a really good, because it's quicker to decap than it is to go for the fuel and decap, you know, and, and you get the pressure of having them on the retreat path, it really, really good. Uh, but plus, we had that like that ninja squad of friends somewhere yes, hiding behind yes. that house. I, 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 I just wanted to avoid those clowns and uh, go for the, for the cutoffs. Yeah, I actually noticed that completely stunted the sniper because the sniper couldn't make any ground once the um, grens were like behind the building. And doing whatever they were doing. Right. So, um, okay, situ situation we're in at the moment Nagano doesn't have double fuel, uh, but don't have any fuel. <laughs> yes. Right. So we're, we're 12 minutes into the game. You don't have AT at this point. You've just got the guards. You know, we've already had uh, tier two, got the scout crop. Like, um, what what does your build do to defend um, against this? Rock? I mean, like, are you are you in a panic position right now, or are you? Mm, well, I was actually expecting a P4 way sooner. So, um, but I knew it was coming because Nogano has a thing for P4s. Mm -hmm. Definitely, because if you watched his game earlier against uh, j 4 Jet, like he uses P4, he loves those things. And SC-76 on this map is just great. There are no cloaked raquettons. They are um, they are perfect against like all the medium vehicles that um, they can uh, that Oscar can get out. Plus, they have a great synergy with snipers. So um, I was like comfortable with going tier three into SC-76s. So I really like this move here. It is a shame the SU-76 missed. You get him yeah, with a nice did, AT. It did, it did some damage though. Like um, it hit the ground next to it. Oh, because so you got some AOE kind of off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Nogano was a little bit late here, like I guess. Yeah. Because uh, that Ura <laughs> was like, <laughs> it took a while to get there. <laughs> Faster, comrades, <laughs> before he realizes. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, man, that MG. So, Did you do you see that? I see, MG? I see it, I see it. I won't. So I saw so, that too. You saw it too. I was okay. like, what the fuck? This, this is uh, <laughs> some, some next level shit. So, like you, so he's got camouflage. Uh, MG42 <laughs> turrets. So it doesn't camouflage the actual weapon? Is that what well, you're saying? Well, sometimes. No, usually it's camouflage, but um, I don't know. I'm <laughs> not sure what, okay. what, what happened there. That's you know, we don't see this in casting. But uh, I'm glad that I've seen it now because I get a little bit of an idea about about how your strategy is going there. Yeah. Thinking, uh, okay. Like, so I, that MG was a really a pain in the ass because I lacked line of sight. Yeah. Um, I lacked uh, proper flanking. So um, yeah, that, w that was a really that was a nuisance. Mm. So. On the field at the moment, we've got the Panzer IV that Nagano has brought in at this point. You, you don't know this right now, it hasn't uh, been seen on the field, but your SU-76 is kind of patrolling. I see you I think, I think it peaked a little bit on the, on the left side, yeah. Yeah, I, and I think, so this is your objective with the SU-76, is you are, uh, you're, you're pursuing wherever the scout card goes, you're kind of putting that pressure on and capping. This is one thing I, I see with lower level players that I think is really important is, 
Um, and, and it depends, it may not actually be anything to you, but how do you cap the map? Are you intentionally pulling Nagano left to right? Do you ever do things like that? Mm. Or, or are you kind of just playing the field at the moment and, and looking for weak spots, that kind of thing? Um, um, not really, like I kind of want to keep my, like as soon as I am back into the game, like at this point I'm pretty got of a solid uh, army composition. Mm -hmm. So uh, at this point, I actually want to like get as ma as many uh, as much territory as possible, like and spread out a little bit. And um, so I, I usually like to have a good ch chunk of map control and like send squads everywhere. Yeah. And usually when I'm on the back foot, I do the the opposite and just like concentrate on one side and try to build up from there. Right. But at this point, yeah. But it, it, it costs me like it costs me map control as well, again because like with the Panzer four. The cloaked MG42 and the Grands are kind of giving me a hard time. Mm. Okay. So, uh, a question for you at this point. You've seen the Panzer IV. Uh, right. Your two SU-76s on the field. Now, I actually, at the, the weekend when we were casting this, I was thinking, okay, well, you, you've gone in with the uh, guard rifle. Uh, you now have access to KV-1, and I was I was kind of thinking maybe you'd get a KV-1 with the two SU-76s, um, you know, um, not wanting to cast a little bit ahead of myself, that's that's not what happens. Uh, but you've got the two SU-76s at the moment, you've seen under 4, like, what are your ideas, do you have any builds in mind right now? Do you have anything you're specifically going for, or are you still playing to your opponent? Well, the KV-1 is a little bit far away f for me. Like, I w w would have needed a better early game to <laughs> actually get there. So, Tier 4 was out of the question for now. <laughs> Maybe I thought of a second sniper, actually, because I was I had the AT department covered, but I needed, like, more anti-infantry. But, like, a couple of minutes later, like, I was... Um, I needed light vehicles with anti-infantry. Uh, anti so right. the T-70s, so I could actually hold grounds because I lost ground to the, on the sides just because there was an infantry squad that I couldn't deal with. And my right. sniper couldn't be like at all fronts at the same time. So I needed those T-70s. And um, mm. I think it was the, the best thing to do because Nugano was relying on his P-4s and I could keep them in check with SU-76s. Yes. So I, I want to ask you something because uh, this is something I bring up in casting and the casting of choice. Uh, of um, uh, of kind of what to go for next. Now, when, when you picked the T70, my assumption was one would be using it to counter infantry, as you said. Is there any inclination that you would be using it for recon purposes? Oh yeah, definitely. Like recon of the T70 recon is perfect, but um, my main priority was to hold the flanks and like to to like make him like commit to one side so I can use the SU-76s better. So, um, yeah, like as soon as the T-70s come out, they, they, they help a lot. So I notice you've, uh, you've got your second squad of engineers here, Minesweeper upgrade, uh, for central capping, but you're three VPs down at the moment. You're less than 250 uh, in. Nagano's playing very well at this point, actually, I think. Um, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, and... There's no doubt about it. I think actually at, at this stage, Nagano was um, was winning. Uh, we, no offense, we we didn't hold high hopes. <laughs> yeah, for the GCS reigning champ. No, um, none taken. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you didn't look particularly strong at this point. Uh, Nagano, as you can see, uh, is banking like 160 fuel. He's easily able to get another vehicle. Rotational turrets against fixed turrets. It looked it looked kind of simple as the way this was going. So mm -hmm. um, you're on the back foot right now, and I started to see this on the weekend. You start to spread out across. The map now, is there a reason you feel confident to spread out? What what's the decision to spread rather than uh, rather than push? So you're not pushing. Well, to be honest, like I feel more comfortable the more map control I have. So, like having map control is more important to me than going for like a decisive blow, unless okay. unless I can really see something happening, right? But um, especially like with losing like on the VP front, I I had to go there. Like if I had 50 VPs, then I would have definitely done something like that. But 
to be honest, I don't really have the, the army composition to do anything aggressive like that. Like, I was on, on the back foot with uh, snipers and SC-76s. Yeah. So now, now with the sniper in the middle, like, that, that felt good. Like, if you push through the center, if you can support it pro accordingly, and you can pick up the AT gun, and the P4 is damaged, and now with the T70, I can actually hold my ground. Yeah. It's pretty neat. So this is really good because the, the Panzer IV is always going to lose to the SU-76. Um, whichever side it goes, you've then got T-70 to defend against the infantry. At this point in the game, you're actually starting to... You're, you're pretty even with Nagano. And this is one thing I didn't... I, I struggled with during the game whilst casting this. So Nagano had a huge leader. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's like, I kept thinking to myself, where has Nagano gone wrong? I haven't really um, seen him lose anything, and I haven't really seen him... Uh, make bad decisions at this point. So, in your eyes, where is Nagano slipping up right now? Where, where, are, you, where um, are you picking holes? Well, I know where he went wrong in the later stages. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, at this point, I don't know. Maybe my my stubbornness. <laughs> Who knows? Like maybe he should have applied more VP pressure. Maybe even like a second MG42 with cloak to make it impossible for me to get like more than two VPs. Um, I don't know. That's uh, it's hard to say. Maybe even a sniper of his own to like just for that occasional counter snipe. Yeah, that would have worked. Like he went heavy with the grants, which worked out great in the beginning, obviously. But it, as soon as I can like support the sniper, um, yeah, that it's, it's gonna have a hard time then. Did you did you realize by the way, like that pants of like came in and it shot like and it hit my T70 on like on the other side. Seriously? Is that what damaged yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, I was so <laughs> confused. I was so confused. It was actually the P4 on the move. And it hit right. the M T. So, uh, we, uh, that, yeah, I mean, that, that, that can happen. And uh, yeah. I think uh, because you realize projectiles can travel actually the entire length of the map. If they <laughs> fire, yeah. So that's really unfortunate. I didn't realize that had happened, actually. Um, Unfortunately, it wasn't like a, a devastating, yeah. a devastating thing. So uh, one thing I want to understand because you spent a lot of time. Do, do you register that you've made any squad wipes at this point? How, how do you believe you squad wiped anything at this point? Um, I don't. Yeah, I think I wipe one with the uh, one grandier squad with a guard's grenade, but that's about it. Okay, and, and do you believe you are? on the back foot or do you believe right now even... yeah, uh, yeah. right now I'm, i think i'm in uh, at an advantage because as soon as i kind of hold the center the p4 is busy um is busy being repaired the pack mm -hmm. is actually pushed back so my t70s like they have full control of the sides which is great so i yeah. kind of wanted uh, to like keep keep uh, the pressure to, okay, like, so I mean, th this point then you are you're starting to feel confident again that the build is good. You have everything locked down. Because I, I was really impressed. One of the one of the best things that I enjoyed about this game was that you already picked a commander that didn't really lend itself to something like a T35 or an ISU or, or an IS2, anything like that. This yeah. is even really came in restricted yourself to a, a tier 3 only build, um, which was adequate anti-infantry and adequate anti-tank. And one thing I, I do want to question, because I, I think this is really good, I think this build was really good, I think it was assessed really well, I think you uh, had correctly identified where Nagano was failing. Um, and I, I'm interested in this, because I have my own opinions on this, but where do you think Nagano could have gone from here? to have countered your strategy? Mm, I think Stucks are pretty good against uh, SU-76s. They're pretty good. Okay. Um, I've got to edit that out because that means A was right and I'm, I'm upset about that. <laughs> yeah, well, P4s have a hard time actually. Like, you, as you can see in the center, like, it's just crazy. He's feeding me a lot of veterans. Yes. So Stucks would have been great because these SU-76s were my only um, anti-tank, right? Mm -hmm. So Stux would have been great. Um, 
Not sure about good pack 40s because of my of the sniper. Because I th I think he was he didn't really want to go that that route because of the sniper. But yeah. I would I would have said Stugs definitely. That's interesting. Then, yeah, so yeah. I mean, we we were looking at this game and we were thinking Stugs is a great idea. The Stug is, is good, you've always got target weak point if you want to go with a stun. So, yeah, a, a good option. So, we, we see at the moment Nagano is going for the other uh, kinds of four, and, and we were questioning at the time, like, what's going on in his mind to bring out this kinds of four? Um, you, know, you just start to climb into this really, really good position, but you're crouching up on three VPs now. Mm -hmm. um, and. You know, this is a good situation. You are, uh, you have enough munitions for the Sturmovic. So at this point, you've got your advantage, but you're down on VPs. Tell me, um, what are you thinking at this particular moment in time? Um, well, uh, I stopped the, the drain. That's all I needed. Like, I don't really ca care if I have like 170 VPs or less, as long as I, as long as I'm able to hold. VPs. So the, the objective is holding VPs rather than pushing still. Right. Like I'm a more defensive, more like reactive kind of player. Maybe that's not it's not always a good idea, but um, I kind of kind of like security in the, in the game. Like I um, I threw games way too often because of was like too over eager. So can you see the MG as well? I get, yeah, I, I keep spotting. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah we'll, we'll we'll send a little message to uh to anonymous at relic.com after this <laughs> to uh, <laughs> to get right. that fixed because the thing is like I, it actually makes me really sad to see that because this is an ability that is you know hasn't been used for ages it's great to see people using camouflage again especially right. the way N nagano has done because nagano was using camouflage at the start of the game to stop your sniper being effective Right, but it was uh, still it, super effective, though. Like, um, yeah, it was really damn good. It was, and it's just a shame actually to see that you can still see the MG because uh, I would love to see people using camouflage efficiently. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's sad to see that that isn't quite working. Maybe he should have also cloaked his his grenadiers. Like, that could have helped him a lot. He completely disregarded that option. Mm. It's hard to say because I guess. His focus seemed to be on equipping G43s rather than um, hiding any, you know, hiding any units for the, the standard rifles. But um, that's true, yeah. Yeah. So let's check this out. You're in a great position right now. You're about to get a triple cap on Nagano. Uh, you're feeling, I guess, like this is a great time to put the pressure on. He's on the back foot. He's, ret he's retreating back in base. AT options are down. Um, so we started to see Nagano fall apart at this point. Uh, in fact, myself and I think everybody watching was just really impressed at this this build because you didn't you didn't step out of tier three. It's kind of you got restricted to playing tier three. Yeah, um, right. You got forced and you you played it very very well uh, to recover. So at this point, we start to see this love in the barrage from the 76. <laughs> Because yeah, that worked, that worked well. Like, the accuracy is so good when they're up close, but that wasn't even that up close. But no, no, it's still, it's still a, job. a reasonable distance, so... Yeah, um, that was, like, the, the perfect situation I wanted to have. Like, uh, key, like keep him on the back foot so my SC-76s can do their damage and keep the T-70s on the sides. Yeah. And that's what I mean, like, he lost the AT gun, and if he went for, like, two stacks, for example, he could have just like really. He could have rushed me with like um, Stuka AT support mm. with the with the close air support. That could have um, probably what he what he needed, or an early sniper, because like if you just a move your a move your sniper, you don't really pay attention. So that's where enemy sniper would come in handy. So whilst we're doing this, because obviously we've got the, uh, the Panzer IV, this is a great engagement on the left-hand side, a great mine placement. You have this T-70 on the right-hand side. This was planned, right? You, you planned to use that T-70 as a, as a base rush, or was it just guarding the entrance? Well, it was, it was actually just chilling there. Okay. So he, he went into for a dive to kill it. But, um, yeah, well, that turned out different. <laughs> 
unexpected. Oh man, these SC seventy six are so good against the force. Yeah. So we knew the fight. great position the the uh the Sturmovix reigning, you've got a main gun uh, critical on the Panzer IV, so you're just comfortable going with the P7. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even point. realize the, the, the P4. Like, I could have, like, dived in and actually killed the, T70, uh, the, the P4 with the T70. Um, so I, I went in while the engagement was happening with the SC-76s. I rushed, rushed in the, the T70 just to, like, kill all the infantry in the base. Yeah. Good idea. Some so, great man as well. So we're pretty much at the end of this game, uh, and I think anybody watching, you may have guessed. But in fact, it's a Loveness masterclass that Loveness won. Uh, <laughs> it should be don't watch that second game. <laughs> yeah, don't watch the don't watch the game after this. But um, so so yeah, I mean, this was a, a really good game. And I guess the, the reason why I wanted to do this with you specifically for this particular game is because we see a build that seems primarily focused around a strong base tier and, uh, and tier 3. And the one thing, I guess, the, the big question to this is, one, did you plan this strategy? Did you have it in mind? Was, or, or, or was this reactive? And, and um, what do you think of it? Like, would you say this could stand alone as a, a set strategy that you could use and, and dominate and dominate players well, with yeah well well usually strategies evolve during gameplay like you always have to adapt to the the situation so if i had actually a good early game if i had a good early game like just um tech to tier four but yeah. um i made the best with what i had which were sc 76s and then i realized hey i need some anti-infantry platform so i went with the t70 Enemy. Um, so this is definitely a legit strat, but I think it would have been just better to go tier 4 if you can afford it, right? Right. Okay, so you would still say uh, teching is better. The one thing I was wondering is that I see this being so effective that in a way I was like, if I had the lead, I would probably still play this strat. Yeah, but I would have, I would have preferred to have like a T-34 on the sides compared to like two T-70s because that can go wrong quite quickly, right? You can lose yeah. those things super fast. And, um, well, but as I, as, as I said, Nogano is really focusing on, like, this P4 build. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that kind of made, made this decision easier, right? Like, the, like even three SU-76s is kind of overkill, isn't it? But, um, yeah. I don't know, it just worked out so well because I knew, perf I knew what I was expecting. I'm not sure what Nagano is doing. Is he trying to just dive this thing? Because I think this is like a glory kill, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The SC 76 train to the, to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that, that's interesting to me because uh, in my head it was like, okay, Love Nest is, is, is on the back foot, but this was kind of like a potential thing. So as a reactional stra uh, strategy, kind of comes down to just great thinking whilst being on the back foot. It was a great game in the sense that uh, being, you were quite far behind, I would say, in territory. Oh yeah, definitely. And, yeah. And, uh, a really, really good game. Uh, a really good, uh, it was it was really good just for Company of Heroes in general because we've, we've cast so many tournaments now and it's been, at least in my opinion, two years before we've seen good strategy prevail over you know from the back foot yeah um, it's more like to 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 keep a keep a cool head like once you're on the back foot right like yeah uh, just make sure you um you like hold on to your vps as much as you can like two vps and then prepare for the for the for the incoming tank because you know it's gonna come because he mm -hmm. had all the, the the map advantage so um i never planned this strategy definitely not like, I would prefer the fast T-34 or something like that. But, um, well, once you start with one SC-76 and then you see, hey, it, is, it does well, then get another one. And then, oh, man, I'm kind of I kind of lack tools to hold the flanks. Then, hey, get the T-70 in and then you end up with three SC-76s and two T-70s. Um, that works, of course. Uh, a fast T-34 would have helped us. would have been my preferred um, strategy. 
mixed with the SC80, uh, 85, for example. Okay. But um, yeah, you just uh, you just start with tier three, and um, then you re realize tier four wouldn't really give you that much more than yep. um, your regular build. So um, you just go with that. Cool. So um, there's one more thing that I wanted to ask you, Lovelist. Uh We've just hit a new patch. Right. Uh, this was kind of like the first King of the Hill for 2018. It was really good. In fact, all the games that we had were, were really good. Um, and I'm going to ask everybody this question. What do you think of the current state of the game? And if there was anything that you would change, if there's anything that you would say maybe uh, could change for the better, what would it be? Mm, well... Like, just a general impression, I think it's really refreshing to know that there isn't a fixed meta, right? This is probably like the first time after a couple of weeks of a release patch that there hasn't been a, a established meta yet, right? Mm -hmm. So if I join a game, I don't know what is going to come out. There will there will be no maxim spam, there will be no... Uh, I don't know, like, I've heard of this uh, guard and guard sniper thing, but... Um, I've seen I've seen people deal with it successfully. Tone down the guards a little bit, right? Yep. But um, overall, I'm just um, really happy with it. So this is a good a good patch then. Oh yeah, definitely. Like just because of the variety, uh, with a few minor tweaks here and there. Uh, but for one v one, it um, it's um, it's it's perfect. Great. Well, uh, that was pretty much all that I needed to ask you. So, uh, Loveness, thank you very much for doing the first of the masterclasses with me. We get a good insight into how you play the game and, and kind of what threatens you at different stages and, and how you react to it. Uh, hopefully there's a lot that people can take from this in terms of what they want to build, in terms of how they should uh, keep a level head and, and respond. And uh, I hope you guys have found this very, very useful. Uh, thanks again, Lovenist, for joining. And we will do a different masterclass next week uh, with another player who will feature in King of the Hill. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this, please do leave uh, a like, maybe a subscribe if you're enjoying the content. And uh, don't forget to follow Lovenest on www.twitch.tv forward slash Lovenest. Um, Lovenest, how often do you stream these days? Oh yeah, yeah. I was just about to say something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> make sure to uh, support my uh, streaming career. <laughs> like probably like once a month, really. Like I'm got a lot of things going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I got this diehard fans, which uh, which I really appreciate. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to the next uh, the next masters class. I, I didn't even know that it was uh, a thing now. Um, maybe you can like ask Nogano and. Uh, Ask him like how he felt from his side. From I would need a translator. That's the, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I would be because... asking the questions he'd be typing on screen. I, I think uh, uh, Maza will uh, volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be. That's a really good idea. That would be a great, a great cast. But uh, all right, well we're going to wrap that up there. Thank you everybody for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the first of the King of the Hill masterclasses, and we will uh, see you next week for the next installment of the series. Tara. <laughs>